Hello and welcome to lesson two in the Let's Program Hangman series. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is writing some small programs, maybe one or two small programs, that allows the user to enter a guess, to enter a letter, and then we need to figure out what are we going to do with that letter when the user makes a guess. In today's program, we'll see how to check it against a randomly selected word that our program has already picked out for us. And we're going to keep track of the user guesses so our program can report if the user has already guessed a letter or not. So let's go ahead and get started with lesson two in the Let's Program Hangman series on what to do when the user selects a letter. Okay, so here we are in our Python programming environment. Uh, just as a side note, before we start throwing code there up on the screen, just keep in mind we haven't started writing the entire game of Hangman. We will get to that in the series. Uh, right now we're just going to be looking at the concept of how to select a letter. So if uh, you're looking forward to programming Hangman completely from start to finish, that will come later in the series and we will write a, a full program. But right now we're just going to look at the concept of selecting a, a letter by the user. Now as I think about what I want to do with this program, the first thing that I want to do is initialize a variable. And I'm going to initialize a variable called guest. Um, and the point of this variable right here is my user is going to enter letters after multiple letters. And I need a place to keep track of the history of everything the user has entered. So as they enter guesses, I'm going to append those guesses into this list variable. The next thing that I want to do is I'm going to write a function called input letter. The purpose of this function will be to allow the user to input a single letter as a guess. Now of course right now we don't have a random word to check it against, uh, but I do want a function that prompts my user to type in a single character. So I'm going to say letter equals input, enter a letter, and I think what I want to do is make that an uppercase letter so that I only have to check a single case. So no matter what the user enters, we're going to return that as an uppercase letter. I think this function should also do some basic error checking. I want to make sure that the user one enters a letter and only a letter and that they enter only a single letter. So we'll do some basic error checking by putting this into a while loop and we'll say while true and this will continually force the user to enter a letter until we either break the while loop or return a letter. And then inside this while loop, we'll have some if checks. And so we'll say if the length of letter is greater than one, meaning the user has entered any combination of characters more than one, we will print, please enter only a single letter to let them know what they've done wrong. And if that's not the case, then we can return letter. Now keep in mind this right here isn't going to check yet to see maybe the user entered a number or a symbol of some sort. But right now we can check to see if the user has entered only a single character. So let's run this program and give it a test run. I actually got another window popping up here, so let's run it right over here. And so let's input letter. And right now, if I enter, say, LKJ, it should tell me to only enter a single letter, which it did, and then prompt me to enter a letter again. This time I'm going to select G, and you can see that we're returning a capital G. That's exactly what I want this function to do. Another simple error check that I can do is say, L if letter dot is numeric, meaning that they've entered a number instead of a letter. I can say, please enter only letters. And if we test this program again, uh, and I've done this correctly, let's input letter as a, we'll run that function, and let's say I enter a five. The program recognizes that's a numeric, uh, an alphanumeric character, and tells us to enter only letters. If I then do POI, tells me to enter only a single letter, and if I finally get it correct and enter, say, a Q, I'm returning the capital Q. So now I have a function that does some basic error checking and allows my user to input a single letter. I now have enough here with this function to do sort of the basics of a game loop. So I'm going to say while true, 
and create a, a loop that will break when I have the user quit, the first thing I wanted to do is print out all the letters the user have guessed. Uh, of course, the user hasn't guessed any at the beginning, but we can still get our uh, while loop to do that correctly, and we can do that with a for loop. So the first thing I'm going to say is print you have guessed the following letters. And I might even put that kind of as a uh, header, so just put some stars up here. And now what I need is I need a for loop to iterate over guessed and print all the letters that the user has guessed. Of course, there aren't, there's nothing in there yet, but we'll be appending to that later. So I'm going to say for i in guessed. I'm going to print whatever, uh, whatever value we've iterated over. And then I'm going to say end equals, and I'm going to put two spaces between everything so that every letter will have two spaces between them. Now that I have that, we can uh, print kind of a, uh, a closing set right there. And real quick, let's go ahead and test that function and make sure that the header is printing correctly. This will create kind of an infinite loop. Yeah, so let's control C to break that. But we do have a, uh, a, working, a working loop here that tells us what the user has guessed, even though they haven't guessed anything. So let's start using this input letter function to get some guesses from the user, append them to guessed, and then get this to print out correctly. After we print this, let's go ahead and get an input statement. And let's store in the variable letter, input letter. And so now we're going to have a variable letter that stores whatever value input letter returns, which should be just a, a single character. After the user has entered that letter, let's go ahead and append it to guest. So we'll say guest dot append that letter. And now what I want to do is just to kind of put a break in my program so that it doesn't fall into this inf infinite loop. I'm going to put a couple of escape sequences there and say press enter to continue. Now, of course, this program is never ending. There's no way to ever break this while loop, but that's okay. This will give us a chance to test and make sure that everything is working correctly. So we've guessed the following letters. There's nothing there. So let's enter an A. It prompts us to continue. And now tells us that we have entered the letter A. And I can already see a bug in my program. If we enter B, you can see what's going on. This line right here, because of this end equals at the end of this for loop, this uh, break right here, these uh, stars, are printing at the end of the for loop's last line. We can fix that pretty easy by putting an escape sequence at the front of that print statement. And let's go ahead and test it now that we've worked that bug out. And so let's guess a letter. And I can already tell it's working better because we have that blank line there. And that's what I'm looking for. When we guess an A, A shows up. When we guess a T, T shows up. When a P, P shows up. Now, there's really no check right now if I entered P again. I can continue to enter that letter. So we need to find a way to make sure that we're not entering duplicate letters. But at its very basic level, we do have a system in place right now where the user can guess letters and our program can keep track of what the user has already guessed. So we can do something with that later. So in order to fix this, let's write a new function. I'm going to define a new function called check letter. And this will check to see if a letter has been guessed already. And we want this to do a, uh, a couple of things. So we need to know what letter the user guessed. So let's pass in a parameter here so that we can let our function know what letter is it that we're supposed to be checking. We can use the in keyword and say if the letter that we passed in is in the variable guest. Then we'll put in a print statement that says you have already guessed that letter. And really, we don't need to do anything after that. However, 
If the user hasn't already guessed that letter, then we're going to print a little message to him and say, you have guessed the letter, we'll use percent %s. And this way the user knows what they've already guessed. And now I'm going to have this function take care of the appending. So at this point, I'm going to do guessed.append the letter that we passed in. And because this function is doing the appending for us now, I don't actually need it to append here in my main program loop. Rather, after the user guesses a letter, I can check that letter by running my function and passing in the user's guess, the user's guess to this function right here. Let's go ahead and test how that function works. So we run our program, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to guess the letter A. It lets us now it now lets us know we've guessed the letter A. When I press enter to continue, it lets me know that I've already less guessed the letter A, so let's try T. We've guessed T, so let's enter T again and see what happens. When I enter T again and it runs check letter, I've passed in a T. The T is already in guessed because we've already appended it, so instead of appending it again and printing that you've guessed the letter T, we're printing the message that the user has already guessed that letter. We've prevented it from appending a second time because the append command only appears when the user hasn't already guessed that particular letter. With that simple change, by writing this function right here, we've given our program the functionality to determine whether or not the user has already selected a character, and we've prevented them from selecting the same character twice. It would also be nice to give our user the ability to quit this program on their own, and we can do that pretty simply. Uh, over here in my press enter to continue, I'm just going to add a little clause, press Q to quit. And now I'm going to have to attach that to a, a variable so that I can check it in an if statement. So we'll say uh, response equal, equals the input of press enter to quit, enter or press enter to continue, press Q to quit. Because of that, I'm going to make sure that we always get an uppercase. So I'm going to add the upper function to this. And now add an if statement if response equals an uppercase Q then I'm going to break the list. If I test this out now, enter A. If I enter Q to quit, the program now breaks on its own. So let's go ahead and add just a colon there so that aesthetically this is a little bit more pleasing to the eye. And we kind of have a fully functional letter guessing program right there. And lesson two is starting to get a little bit lengthy, so this seems like a good stopping point. We're going to go ahead and break it here and continue in part two of lesson two. Hopefully so far uh, you've learned how to get a user to enter a single letter and how to append that letter to a list so that we can do something with it later. In the next part of this video we're going to take the guess that the user makes and we're going to see if it is in a word or whether it's not in a word and we're going to report that information to our user. So lesson two uh, we'll continue in the next video and it will pick up right here where we left off. Until then, thank you so much for your support of the Python tutorial series and Let's Program Hangman. Thanks for watching and have a great day.